Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. A couple years back, I received the sweetest letter, and inside that letter was something that I hold very dear to my heart, and it's called the Pocket Prayer Quilt. This customer had wrote me the kindest letter. She was just so appreciative of what we do here at Shabby Fabrics, and she really wanted to let us know how much she appreciated us, and she also made me this Pocket Prayer Quilt. And I thought it was the sweetest thing. Like I said, it it was tiny. It's tiny. It finishes at two inches. And inside, there's a cross in there. I can feel it when I move my fingers around. And on the back side, there's the pocket prayer quilt. And it says, this pocket prayer quilt was made especially for you to slip in your pocket. Throughout the day, when your fingers touch the cross inside the quilt, be mindful of God's love and grace for you. Keep it as a tangible symbol of God's peace. Isn't that amazing? This is something I want to share with you. This will be available as a free download. So we'll give you some instructions there. It's very basic, but we'll also have the prayer there. So if you want to be able to print that out and make these and give them, you'll be able to do that. If you want us to take care of kind of preparing all that for you, we have these little kits put together. You'll get 12 of the little brass pins. I don't know if they're brass, but they're gold plated to look like brass. You'll have these beautiful 12 gold crosses in there. And we've printed out the prayer on some really nice thick paper and cut it out to size for you. So that way you don't have to worry about printing that out. Our whole point here is to spread some good news and some hope for the world. And I know when I got that pocket prayer, I put it in my purse and it's been there ever since. I take it with me wherever I go. So let me show you how to make the simplest pocket prayer quilt, which is just a four patch. And then I also discovered when I was fiddling with some um, pre-cuts, another way to make one that's the hourglass block. And it was really fun doing it with charm packs. So I'll start off with the simple one with just the four patch. And then I'll show you how you can do charm packs and the hourglass block. And you'll actually make four of these at the same time. And it's fun because, of course, a charm pack has a variety of fabrics, so no two will be alike. I love that. Actually, four will be alike, but you'll be able to shake it up and make the backings different. I'll show you as we go. Okay, to make the four patch, you're going to cut your strips to one and a half inches wide. I've cut that here. And as I've been making medical masks, I have all kinds of scraps left over. So this is great for any scraps you have, one and a half inch wide. You'll just put them right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam allowance. I've done that ahead of time. And just press to the darker side. Then you'll take that to your uh, cutting mat, grab a ruler, and you'll cut two one and a half inch uh, little strip units there. Let me square that up. I think I'll put my glasses on at this point. These are so fun to make. And you know, you know what I'm figuring out in life? Some of the gifts that really um, are the least expensive are the most enduring because they were made with heart, and I love that. So let's cut two one and a half inch strips out of our strip set. And then we'll take those over to the sewing machine. Before we actually go there, let's just, we've got two of these. Of course, we'll have them opposite. And because we pressed our seam, to one side. Now they have these beautiful interlocking seams. You could put a pin. I don't think it's necessary. Let's take this to the sewing machine and we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And I always said I'd never do mini quilts. Look at me teaching you how to do a little mini quilt. The miniest of all, so small. Uh, so now that I take it to my pressing mat, I'm just going to press that open. This should measure at this time two and a half inches. And I've just cut a two and a half inch a piece of fabric. Don't worry about things matching. It's, you know, this is kind of make do with what you have. People are just so happy to be 
given something like this. Don't worry about all the fabrics matching like we normally do with a very organized and sophisticated quilt. This isn't what this is about at all. So now you've got a two and a half inch four patch. You could go ahead and take your ruler if you want and make sure it's all, it looks like we're two and a half inches and we have a two and a half inch backing. Now the one that I have here, I put a piece, I initially tried this with batting and I'll tell you it was really hard to turn through. Of course we all have scraps of batting and you could put that in there but it, like I said it's you have very little space to turn this through. I found it too thick and difficult to turn through so if you add just another piece of fabric back there that makes a great second layer. So let me grab another piece of fabric that will be my backing. I've just grabbed a charm square. You know why I love charm squares? And we'll definitely be getting into those in the hourglass uh, little prayer quilt. Is because this is already five inches. So if I cut this two and a half inches this direction and two and a half inches this direction, I have four backings. It's so convenient to use the charm squares for this purposes or maybe a mini charm pack which is already cut to two and a half. So that's when charm packs can really help us out. So I really want to have a second layer. So I'm going to consider this kind of what we would use for batting, okay? That can be a plain white. It could be a very thin piece of, of batting if you're inclined. But I'm going to use a piece of just a piece of fabric here. This is my backing. We'll go right sides together. Now you can see this is pretty tiny and I'm going to have to turn through. We're going to start, I don't want to start at the quarter because I got to turn this through. I'm going to start probably about here. Really reinforce that. A scant quarter all the way around coming to about here and stop and we'll turn through. So here's what we here's what it looks like so far. So you've got you can see I did a little bit of a scant quarter. I'm just going to trim those corners just to reduce as much of the bulk as I can. You may or may not have a point turner in your sewing room. Boy, if you don't, this is the time to get one. If there was ever a time I needed it, it's this project. Okay, so we just began to kind of push that through. And the process will be the same for the sewing and the turning through when we make the hourglass one. So this is the same steps. Once we get this one sewn through, pulled through, you can see it's difficult to get it in. You can imagine if this was batting. Oh, it took me quite a while. And we don't want, we want it to be fun and not frustrating. Like I said, you could use just the two fabrics and not use a second layer at all. The way I did, I did two, the four patch, the fabric behind, and then the quote backing, right, which is this pink. So this is where this tool really shines. There's no way I'm going to get in those corners without this. When I'm filming this video right now is during the middle of this COVID-19. I don't know when you're going to be watching this video. This could be a year from now. Just know that this is the time in the United States and really around the world. There's a lot of fear going on right now. Let's give some people some hope and some love and some positivity with making things like this, not just during the middle of a pandemic, but all the time, even when times are good. It's good to just be reminded of God and love and just being a, a ray of hope and and uh, positivity for people, especially when they don't expect it. You know, that's the best time sometimes. Just to say, I appreciate you. I see you. All right, let's get that corner out a little bit better. All right. Now, before I close that up and sew an eighth of an inch around, 
you know what I've got to do, right? I'm going to take our beautiful cross, our gold cross. I'm going to put that in the middle, and I'm going to hold that right in the middle right there. Why that's important is I'm going to sew an eighth of an inch around, and I don't, of course, want to let that cross slip into the corners where my a needle could hit that and break a needle. So I'm going to fold that down just a touch more. Okay, now let's go sew about an eighth of an inch around. It's very close to the edge. And I can feel that in the middle. <laughs> I've got my finger on it so it doesn't move. Isn't that so sweet? It's just the tiniest little quilt. The one that I was given, just like you'll see on these right here, it was tied with some embroidery floss because the quilts in the day were tied by hand. Some people still uh, tie quilts by hand. So now I'll move the cross out of the middle, maybe more toward the corner. I just have some embroidery floss and I have our um, chenille needles. You just want a needle that has an eye big enough to take the whole, the whole six strands of a skein of embroidery floss. This is again just a bonus. It just has that sweet little touch. I'm just going down coming back through you can see that just on the opposite side There we go. And I just try a, tie a couple knots. One, two. And then I just trim it. So we've got our little our little quilt done. Now we'll just grab our prayer and our pin. And I we put it on the back side. And these little, they just poke right through the paper. Just go straight through the paper, no problem. And then you just pick it up and attach it to the quilt. Just like that. And you have your little pocket prayer. So isn't that so sweet? I love it. Okay, how do I do it to make the hourglass? Steps will be exactly the same of how you get, how you finish it. But let me show you how you basically make four and one. So fun and really, really, really easy. And I think you can make them faster, which I want to make a lot of these right now, especially right now. All right, charm pack. I love that it's pre-cut. I can just start going. Uh, this happens to be the Abbey Rose charm pack from Moda. I'm just going to grab some contrasting fabric. Maybe I'll grab these two. I like those two fabrics. Okay, right sides together. We are just going to sew a quarter inch all the way around the entire charm pack. And I just sewed a regular quarter inch. It could be a scant. Either will work just fine. Okay, I'm going to get out my spinning mat. I'll just move a couple of these things out of the way. This is a lot of fun making these. This one in particular is fun because you can, uh, it just has a different look. In fact, I wanted to show you the, well, I showed you the one that's the four patch, and here's what that the hourglass looks like. So we'll take our charm square. We're just gonna take a ruler. Let's get rid of those threads. 
and we'll go corner to corner. I'm just going to rotate that, lift it up, corner to corner. This is why we're able to make uh, four at the same time. And what's really fun is you'll take one of the squares, just like I showed you before, cut it in half, cut it in half. You have the four backings that belong to these four hourglass units. So in one charm pack, what did I calculate? So every three squares, you get four um, pocket prayers. And in charm packs, I believe there's 42. You, that is a big number. That is <laughs> a lot of pocket prayers. So, so fun. All right, give a press, decide which direction you want to press in and go that direction every time. Let's say that we're gonna go to the pink every single time. Go ahead and just press them all. I think the reason I like this process a little bit better than the other one is, as you'll see, we get to square up. I get a true two and a half inch, uh, which is awesome because it just seems to, I love the precision of being able to square something up. It's always really helpful. Don't worry about the dog ears right now. I'm not worried about that at all. We're just going to go opposites so that they'll be opposite of each other corner to corner. We have a cool tool here. This is a new creative grid, grid tool. Let me grab a friction pen real quick. I believe I've got one in here. There's one. We go corner to corner, just like this. Remember how we normally draw the line and sew a quarter inch either side? You can still do that. That's what you would be doing instead of what I'm doing. This just alleviates that step because now I get to sew on the line. So if you, like, I don't want to wait to get that Creative Grid ruler to do this or tool, then what you would be doing is drawing a line corner to corner and sewing either side of that. You quilters know what I'm talking about. All right, let's go to the sewing machine. We'll sew on this line, pivot, come back, and go down that side. you've got a machine that has a needle down feature, go ahead and use that. It's a great feature to be using right now. I'm sewing with this Confetti 50 weight cotton. I've been using this at home too. I love it. I love how much there is on a spool. I'm not changing spools all the time. White Neutral, gray, and black is going to get you piecing on any project you're ever going to do. All right, cut corner to corner. And let's take this back to here. This is so cool. I've got to show you this. I want the overhead camera to pick this up. This is one of the coolest things about doing this method. Let me get things out of the way so you can see what I'm going to do because I definitely want you to see this. All right. As I open this up, you can see that this seam goes this way. Let me cut some of these threads so it's a clearer view for you. You can see what I'm doing. Looks like that needs to just get pressed over there. You can see that you could press it open if you want to, but you see how that seam goes here and this seam goes here. If you kind of just keep following that rotation and you push that seam here and you push that seam here, do you see how that just pops open right there like that? It's such a cool little thing to do and it just pops open. It's kind of a more of a cool thing, I guess. I think it makes the center seam lay even flatter. I just enjoy that. It's just so sweet and so fun to do. But if you've ever struggled with making hourglass blocks, this is just about foolproof. Look how the point is perfect. That's just because the assembly is so straightforward. So again, let me show you on this one. You could absolutely just press the seam open. There, it's, 
it's going to get you the same thing. No problem. You can 100% do that. But let's just pretend this is what it came off the sewing machine, right? Because that's what did. You can see the, the seams are going this way. That means this would go this way. This goes this way. Just push them that way. And isn't that so fun? You kind of pop that seam open. It doesn't destabilize. It's not going to come apart. I just think it is a really neat little thing to do. Anyway, I'd probably get more mileage out of that than I should, than I should but I think it's really fun. Okay, so we have these things, right? And I said we get to do this squaring up, which I love to do. So let's go ahead and grab a ruler. This is a four and a half inch square up ruler. I like this ruler. One of the reasons I do is it's got the two and a half inch lines very well defined for me. And it also has this diagonal line. What that means is if I see the two and a half lines inside of my boundaries of my fabric and I have this running along my uh, seam, I'm in a very good place to begin squaring this up. We'll make our first two cuts and then we'll rotate it toward us. Now we just made two clean cuts, right? We know these and these are clean. So let's rotate our ruler. We have our two and a half and we have our two and a half. Let's set that right in that corner, just like that, so that we know we're going to clean off this side and clean off this side. Now we have our two and a half inch square. We grab one of our charm packs, just like we did before. Remember, we cut it in half and we cut it in half. We have those still left over from the one we did before. And now I have a front, a front and a back. And you could just grab maybe a, a scraps of white muslin to be a lining. It could be whatever you want. Or again, maybe not even use a lining at all. And you'll sew it together exactly the way that you did the other one. So, and again, you'll, the, the uh, idea of doing the embroidery floss is just an additional sweet little touch. Uh, we've got one done here, but I've seen plenty of pocket prayers that don't have that. That's your choice, of course, whether you want to take that extra step or not. I had so much fun showing you how to make the pocket prayer. It's something that is, that it's not a huge expense in product. It's, it's your time. And I think it's time well spent to bless someone else with something like this. And I hope that you'll make many of those and give those to those that you love and maybe even to a stranger and really make their day. So thanks for joining me for the pocket prayer mini quilt. I'll see you next time in another Shabby Fabrics video.